Hey everyone, Chris Kelly here at ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created the force field effect using HitFilm Express. One thing I do want to know before getting started on the tutorial is that the assets I am using are pro effects. However, if you don't have a pro account, you can still follow along and learn how to make your own force field. I'm going to be using a lot of effects that are built internally to HitFilm Express. You can find the force field effects that I use by going to ProductionCrate.com, toggling down the VFX and media elements, and finding the Magic Powers category. Here you can see a variety of force field effects. The ones I used are these cool hexagonal ones, the sci-fi force field one. I use the front and back compens. If you don't know what compens are, they are just front and back renders of different simulations or animations. So you can drop your subject directly in the center of these either by rotoscoping or keying them out, which is exactly what I am gonna do in this tutorial. So I've already downloaded both the front and back of this Sci-Fi Force Field 1 Compen effect and imported into HitFilm Express. Here I am in HitFilm Express. I have my footage as well as my visual effects and my comp all neatly arranged here. I have a clip of me in front of a green screen with my super janky setup. It was a pretty windy day and I had to use a skateboard and a backpack to weigh it down for me. I also have a clean plate back here. One other thing to note is the perspective is a little wonky. Uh, there is a hill behind me and the ground itself isn't super even. This effect would definitely work a bit better if the ground was perfectly flat. However, it is not and we're going to go ahead and work with that anyway. So what I want to do first off is just key out this screen. Luckily, HitFilm Express has a wonderful keyer. If I just type in green, you can find the green screen key effect, which I will drag directly onto my Chris key layer. And as you can see instantaneously, my green screen is gone and I can see right through it. I want to make a few small adjustments, but it did work pretty well as a preset. The next thing I want to do is just create a garbage mat to get rid of the skateboard and the backpack and the stands and the borders here. One thing to note is I do want to keep my shadow in it because the shadow makes it clear that I am actually in the scene. So I'm just going to select this freehand pen tool thing here and just start masking around. And there's this little extra piece of the border here so I'm going to create an additional mask. And I'm going to change this secondary mask from add to subtract. And we can even feather it out, maybe just one pixel. And I know my feet stay pretty still for this shot, so I don't have to move the mask at all. The garbage mat is now done. So the next thing I'm going to do is just import those force field effects. I'm going to drop the back effect underneath my keyed footage. And I'm going to drag in my front effect as well and just line that up in the timeline. And with both of my force field effects selected, I'm going to right click them, go up to blend and let's make this a screen. So you could leave it just like this if you wanted to, but I want to use a couple of the HitFilm Express distortion effects that are super cool. Before I do that, I, I do want to be able to see through the front of it a little bit better. Since I am using a screen blending mode, uh, if I make the front force field a little bit darker, it should actually make it a bit more visible. So I'll do that by throwing on a curves effect. And I'll go over to my controls and toggle that down. And I just want to drop the middle a bit lower. That's pretty cool. One thing I am noticing now, however, is that the light is on the wrong side. It looks like it's on the left side when the light should actually be on the right side. So I just want to flip both force field effects horizontally. So I'll select the front one and toggle down the transform. Unlink the scale here and just type in negative 100 for this value. And that flips it to the opposite side. 
and I'll just go ahead and do that really quickly for the back as well. For the distortion, I want to just start with the back of the force field. So I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to disable the front for now. And what I want to distort is the clean plate. So I'm going to select my clean plate and control D to duplicate it. Now the top clean plate, I'll select. And the effect I want to drop on is called insect vision. Now, I only discovered this distortion effect recently and it is super awesome. I'll go ahead and drag it on so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see it creates this hexagonal distortion grid uh, that kind of represents like a bee's or a fly's perspective, which by itself is really awesome, but we can use it in so many different ways. So what I want to do is shrink down these hexagons to roughly match the size of the hexagonal grid that is in my force field. So I'll do that by toggling down my insect vision here, and let's just change the lens size, bring that down right around there's pretty cool. I can also change the zoom if I want a little bit, maybe bring it down to right around there, and I can also change the bulge. So I like a fair amount of it because the distortion is cool. So maybe I just leave it like this for now. Now this effect is flat. Uh, I don't think there's any transformation effects for the insect vision that gives me that kind of warped edge look, which would help sell the spherical look that I'm going for, but I could just do it manually. So over in my effects window, I'm going to type in spherical warp and I'll select the spherical warp and drag that onto my secondary clean plate which has the distortion. I'm actually just going to name this distorted clean plate. Awesome. So now I have my spherical warp effect on my distorted clean plate. It is actually warping it the wrong direction though. So I'll toggle down the spherical warp and I just want to drag this amount into the negative and we go all the way into the negative 100. And what that does is now these Hexagons here are bigger and the hexagons further away are smaller, which is similar to what's going on with our force field. I can also mess with the scale a little bit if I want. Just try and get to match up a little bit better. So what I want to do next is tell this distorted clean plate layer to only be visible where my back of the force field is visible. And this is really easy to do with a set matte effect. So I'll just drag this set matte effect directly onto my distorted clean plate layer. And I'll just toggle down all these effects. And I wanna make sure it is beneath both the insect vision and the spherical warp effect. And I can toggle it down and change my source layer from none to the footage crate sci-fi force field one back, which is directly above it. And now you can see it is only visible where our force field back layer is visible, which is exactly what we want. So I like this effect a lot. I think it's working out pretty well. If I go ahead and just turn on my um, force field front layer, I'm going to have to make a comp of everything below the front of the force field. So I'll select everything and right click it and let's just go to make composite shot and I'll just call this everything, hit okay. And I'll jump back into my main comp. So I'm gonna apply the same effects that I applied to the back of the force field, the same distortion effects to the front of the force field. So with this everything clip selected, I want to just duplicate it by hitting control D. And the second layer is the one I want to add all the distortion to. So I'll just jump into my everything comp and find the distorted clean plate. And let's just copy all these effects. Hit Control C and jump back into my main comp. Hit Control V and you can see it works. Now the spherical warp is actually reversed. It is not going in the direction that we want. So for now I'm just going to disable that. And what I want to do with the set matte effect is just change the source layer from none to the front of the force field. And now you can see that it is contained to where the front of the force field is visible, which is exactly what we want. So if I play it out, you can see that the distortion is going entirely around me. 
works out pretty well. It's pretty cool. It, it may be a little too extensive and heavy right now. So I'm going to mess with a few settings. One other thing I do notice is that it is extremely flat looking uh, because we have the spherical warp turned off. I'll go ahead and turn it on right now. What I'd want to do is just reverse the amount to increase it. But you can see if I do that, it starts to warp the back of the force field, which is not what we want. So instead of using the spherical warp, I think I'm going to use a bulge instead, which just gives me a little more control. So let's delete the spherical warp. And in effects, I'm going to type bulge. And let's drop this bulge right in between the insect vision and the set mat. I think I also want to change the insect vision. So before I do anything with the bulge, I'll disable it. I want to change the insect vision to not be dis so distorting. So I'll toggle that down and I can change the zoom to and increase it. So there is some distortion that is happening, but it's not so much that I can't see anything that is going on within the force field. So that looks a bit better to me. I think I'm going to keep that for the front of the force field. I'm going to go ahead and re-enable the bulge here. I'm not actually going for this like Tweedledee Tweedle dumb look. What I want to do is distort the front of this uh, insect vision distortion on the front of the force field to kind of be a little more spherical like we did on the back. So toggle down this bulge effect. What I want to do is just increase the radius. Select my selection tool and I want to bring this a little lower now. Increase the radius again. And I can bring the bulge way down. Maybe just like 0.07. Let's try that. Cool. So now we are distorting the front of the insect vision so it isn't perfectly flat. It does have a kind of spherical warp to it. So I think I have everything together the way I want, but just to confirm, I'm gonna do a RAM preview. Let's go back to the first frame and just hit this arrow here to get our RAM preview going. Let's check it out. Ooh, I like it. I think it's working out pretty well. I might want to actually start with a little more distortion on the front of the force field and then just ease it over time. Uh, I like how it is here, so what I want to do is select my everything layer that has my insect vision and make sure I'm on the last frame here. And I just want to keyframe the zoom and then I can navigate back to where everything is starting. Maybe like here just so I can see what the distortion looks like. I want to bring this zoom up so the distortion is a bit heavier. And one thing I also noticed is I should increase the scale of the overall lens size. So maybe like right around there looks pretty cool. And that matches the size a little bit better of this front half of the force field. So let's go ahead and do another RAM preview. Oh yeah, that is awesome. I think the distortion's a little too heavy, too long. So what I want to do, I think, is just grab this last keyframe of the zoom effect on the insect vision. So let's go ahead and just find that keyframe. So this keyframe here, and I just want to speed up this animation a little bit so it's not distorted for as long as it currently is. Maybe I'll drag this first keyframe over as well a little bit. And let's just do another quick RAM preview of everything. Yeah, I really like how the distortion is moving like that. It kind of makes it look like the force field is, is kind of settling in a little bit. So I like it so much for the front. I think what I want to do is animate the distortion on the back as well. So I'm just going to jump into my everything comp and let's find my distorted clean plate which has my insect vision on it. And instead of copying and pasting keyframes like someone who knows what they're doing, I'm going to just create my own new keyframes by toggling down the insect vision, saying a keyframe for the zoom here. And let's just navigate to here. And I'm going to adjust the zoom to where I think it should kind of settle, which is probably around here. And now we can jump back into our main comp and preview it.
Cool, so I think I like this as the final effect for the force field itself. Uh, I want to add a cool element for when I throw something to the ground. So what I want to do for that is just add a lens flare. And let's drag one of these light flares on here. Cool, and I'll toggle this down and just mess with a few settings. Maybe bring the intensity down a little bit. And what I want to do is just have this lens flare animate right when I'm kind of letting go. So I just want to keyframe my hotspot position. And let's navigate forward to right when my force field starts to appear. And let's just drag this position down. And what I want to do here is keyframe my brightness, move forward one more frame, increase my brightness, move forward one more frame and drag my brightness all the way down and I'll do the same so I'll set a keyframe for my brightness here move backwards a frame and set the brightness to zero so that is our force field tutorial really could not have done it without the insect vision that is available in HitFilm Express as awesome as HitFilm Express is HitFilm Pro is that much cooler. I really recommend you checking out their Pro version. I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description, so make sure to check it out. There are tons of awesome different features that are only available in the Pro version, and the Pro version is definitely an affordable price. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little sound design, maybe a little color grade, uh, glow effects, something like that to just finalize this scene and bring it all together. But yeah, that is the majority of our force field effect. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any requests for future tutorials, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you all next time.